Okay, thank you everybody. Um, we'll get started with our next session, which is going to be led by Astri Arneson from the EHA. Astri is going to talk to us about advocating for the international community with HDCAB. So thank you very much, Astri. So thank you. So we are a small and intimate group, which is nice. If you want to come closer, you're more than welcome. But otherwise, you can hear me from wherever you are. Yeah, so uh, I'm Astri, and I'm from a Huntington family. Um, and that's the background for my engagement in the community. My mother had HD, had, had passed away many years ago. Uh, and I have a sister as well affected in the late stage. And a brother passed away a few years ago with the disease. So uh, I've been lucky myself. I tested, now it's 10, 12 years ago, and found out I did not have the Huntington gene. So that was, of course, very fortunate for me. But still, this community is, is where I belong, really. And uh, I try to do my best to make the future better than the past for those affected. And I think HDCAB is one tool and, and one project, if you want, or a work we do in close collaboration. Because this community, we need every single hand. Can I do like this? Yes. So this work that we're doing here is together with the, so my organization, the European Huntington Association, HDO, but also the International Huntington Association. Because for us, it's really important that we bring the global voice to the table. And I'll explain a little bit more what, what we are doing. Um, so HDCAB has nothing to do with the cab, the yellow cabs, or whatever color they have. But the name is really taken from community. The C is the community. We bring the community, and with that we mean the global community. Because no matter where you live, we have a lot of differences, but we share so much in relation to HD. And it amazes me how people from so different backgrounds and parts of the world bring their points of views to the table and, and we share a lot of commonalities. So that's an important part for also for the industry to understand that we share a lot, even if we have differences. And then we give advice. So we exchange ideas, we bring our point of views, and we discuss. And it's related to, to um, those who approach us and ask for advice. Is mainly, so far, industry. So pharma industry. Because they are instrumental in developing drugs. You know that. But we are also open to discuss with academic groups or other groups who are doing some work in the field if they want to listen us out and hear what the family members, community means or can bring of perspectives. So it's about the different elements in a trial. Doing a trial is a lot of hard work and there is a lot of considerations to, to plan for and, 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 and think about how can we do that. And these voices, these people, this is from an advisory board we did a few months ago with, I think it's PTC is the company here. So these voices, these people, they are family members with different relation to the disease. So some of them are tested gene negative, some are at risk, some are gene positive, some are partners or family members, uh, close ones, affected with HD, but they all need to come from a family background related to HD. And then we are asked from the companies, um, how, how much can we demand? Can we ask people to come in every month? Can we ask them to do lumbar puncture ever so often? What do you think? What do people need? What can they really commit to, to be able to stay in for the duration of the entire trial? Because that's really important. If you sign up to do 
uh, trial and to be part of it, you need to understand and be supported to stay in and do the commitment that it takes until the end of the trial. Because dropout, when people leave the trial before it's ended, it, it's, it's not good. If we can have as many as possible go through the entire trial, it brings up much more data and solidness to the trial, which is important for the quality of the result. So we try to give input to that, and we try to give input to how can we communicate so you, everybody, knows about the ongoing project and what it means. Because we think, really sincerely believe that knowing is empowering. And we need to know, to be able to take informed decisions about whether to try to sign up and take part, uh, or whether, as, as Matt asked the question here, maybe look for another opportunity, if there is any. But what we also do is to discuss with the company where, where could it be a good idea to bring the trial? Because in my experience, they are a little bit conservative in the sense that they continue to do what others have done before them. They ask the same countries, they ask the same sites, and that's been working up to now. But now, when more and more you know, projects come up, we need to include new sites, I think, and new countries. Uh, and I think that's a good idea also because the motivation there will be very high, I think. So that's also something we are giving our input to. And this is the one we did with Unicure as well, half a year ago. So we've done multiple advisory boards since we started, and it's just a year and a half ago since we started. And I can see some of the HDCAB members here. Maybe you could wave your hand, Anne. Mustafa, Tess, Mega, and there is space for more. We would like to have more people coming into the pool of HD cab and be, make themselves uh, available. And what you get to do is really an opportunity to be where things are happening and be first, you know, first hand informed which is rewarding, I think, and I think all the members think it's really rewarding to, to learn about these projects and what, what the companies are trying to achieve. And of course, to bring your opinion to the table. Because actually, uh, it's amazing, even people working hard in the Huntington field cannot really understand the full complexity of living with this disease. <clears throat> so, when people tell their story, tell about different aspects of how their life has been or how they are coping, it's really an eye-opener for most everybody, I think, that has been talking to us and listening to, to the members. So it's important. It's important. And I think also it's a, it's a kind of a two-way um, effect that we motivate each other. I think for the companies to meet family members and hear their stories motivate them to keep on and really work hard. And for us, it's motivating to be part of the process of what they're doing. So I think I would just say a little bit about why. I have already said something about it. But it's really the unique expertise that these people are bringing. And nobody, nobody can really have that expertise without having the shoes on. So we don't pretend that we are better scientists or know, you know, the, the, the methodology better than, than the company or other academics uh, that's been working with the trial, but we bring a completely different expertise. And that's really unique. And I'm so happy that it's really been appreciated and, and been, been uh, requested from those who have approached us and asked us for advice. <clears throat> and I think it's really important that we have this opportunity to bring our opinion to the table. Is this important? 
I, I, I remember I was approached by a scientist or a, I can't remember a person from a company asking, is aggression a thing in HD? Is, is irritability a thing in HD? And I said, what? Do you think it is? <laughs> yeah. So even those kind of things that we think is, everybody knows that, of course, that's a thing. It's not that evident. So we need to bring our opinion. And, and what does it take? You know, we have had a lot of discussions about, it's hard for people to come and, and take days off work to be there and do all these measurements. And we had one member who said, I think that was a really eye-opener also to me. It was that, you know what, when I sign up for, to do a trial, HD takes over my entire focus because it, it's demanding. I'm re being reminded, maybe I have this you know, smartwatch on and, and, and I have to do measurements. I have to really be committed to this trial. And then it takes over my entire mind for the duration of the trial. And she said, she had been an, in a trial in the United States. And then she said, and when that was over, I had to move to start a new life to take, give myself a break. So that's how demanding it can be. Maybe it's not for everybody, but it can be. And it's, easy, it's important that, that the people doing the trial at the clinics understand that and provide support. Provide all the support that, that we can and that, that's needed. So that voice is extremely important. We want the trials to be done together with us in partnership with the participants and the community. And we want to influence we want to question, how much placebo do we need, really? I know we are usually doing half or at least a third. Is it really necessary? Can we discuss that? How long should it be? We're in a hurry. And how can we ensure recruitment as fast as possible? Because we are in a hurry. And the faster we can recruit in, the faster we can get the result to conclude. Is this a way forward for that drug, that treatment, or should it be stopped? So far, the HD community has been fantastic. The recruitment has gone so well in, in, in most of the studies that have been ongoing um, up till now. I fear. I see some signs of things slowing down, and we need to do a, you know, a reinforced effort to, to ensure that there are people out there who knows about the trials, who learn about the opportunities, and who are willing to sign up to do them. And we need the clinics to maybe start work a little bit more proactive and a little bit more different than they have done in the past in terms of how they recruit. We think that to collaborate with the community and the association is a key, because the associations and the community is really the most trusted source for information. It's not the doctors. Sorry to say, I mean, <laughs> many have a good doctor and they trust them and the doctor are thinking about them if there is a trial coming up, but most people don't. Most people say, my doctor would never know if there is a trial for hunting coming up somewhere nearby. So, we have to relate on ourselves, we have to educate ourselves to empower ourselves as a community to take action. And what we also want to do with HDCAB, which is an important part, and if you were here at the previous session, Lauren touched very briefly upon it, access. I have been very naive, because I have been thinking since we discovered the gene and really we're starting to hope for drugs to be developed soon, I have been thinking once approved, so the regulators, the FDA or the EMA or other regulating authorities says, this drug, this treatment has proven that it's efficacious, it's good for patients, it will reach us. But that's not the case. We have to continue to work all the way through the process of having the treatment reach patients. 
And that's a lot of hard work. And we have to do it together with the companies to make them realize and understand and agree that, you know what, we want this, our treatment, to be accessible everywhere. We need to show solidarity and fight for the community, as the AIDS community did back in the 80s. We should do the same. We should really show them. We will support you, industry, in every step, but you need to support us back and really make that effort that whatever you can to make. Oh, now it stopped. No. So, uh, so that's also something we haven't touched so much upon yet with HDCAB, but it is, it's definitely something we will do more of now that we hopefully are approaching the moment when we have something approved for HD patients. So, we have a lot of work to do, but we have a lot of good people in here, but we have space for more. So, if you know anybody, or if you are interested yourself, please contact us, because uh, we have space for more voices. I just want to show you this very short video, and then we can open for questions or comments. So there is this web page where you can also check out more and, and where the contact details are, or you can just contact me or anybody in the team if you want to, to discuss more opportunities for you to join or whatever. So that was basically what I was planning to tell you today. Thank you so much, Astri. That was really interesting. It's really good to see all the progress that you're making and more to come. Um, so we'd like to open it up for questions. Does anyone have a question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I was wondering what kind of resources are you looking for? Or do you need something uh, to have something special to join? And what... Like, how much time can I expect to invest in this board uh, when I try to join? You have to invest some time. It's not very, very demanding, but you have to attend as many of the online trainings that we are doing, and that, that's not a lot, maybe four, or max five in a year. Uh, and because we learned that during the pandemic, we do them online and it works. So, so you will learn about the basics of, of, of clinical trials and things you need to know about and understand to be able to provide input. Uh, and then, of course, we will ask uh, whenever a company has approached us. For instance, tomorrow we will do two. And then we ask people, are you able to, to join for that advisory board in particular? And then you say yes or you say no. That's why we, we build a pool of people, because we understand that people can't always say yes. But of course, if you have super busy every day and you always have to say no, then it's not a big point to be there. But, but I would say it's hard to estimate the exact. So we do some ad boards every year, maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven. I don't know. And more companies coming in the field, so more will be. And that's why we are looking for more people, I guess, also so we can share the commitment. 
Thank you for that question. Are there any more questions? I mean, just the most basic question. I guess, I, I'm assuming you already mentioned it, but for us to join, is it just to approach you and talk to you about it, or um, go through the online form filling or something of that sort? I think we have a QR. Do we, or does that work? No, you, you can just approach us. Okay. You can just approach us. It, it's me and I have a colleague, Tina, she's not here, or, or the communication people, mm -hmm. Claudia or Daniela, and then we will connect and, and speak with you and see yeah. if this is something you can commit to and, mm -hmm. and then we include you. Is this also agree. only for people based in Europe or people from um, other nations can also join? This is really important. It's a global yeah. initiative and we sincerely want more people also from outside Europe and North America. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and the contact information is on that webpage, hdcab.org. Also, if you don't see us here today, or yeah. Any other questions? Okay, I have a I have a question. So, um, do you liaise or work with any other advocacy groups, perhaps from um, those working in other rare diseases or neurodegenerative diseases? Not in particular with HDCAB, but I do. I'm, I'm engaged in a lot of rare disease and rare neurological disease communities and collaborations there. And I've, that's where we learned this, actually. It's from the Duchenne World Foundation. They, they did this and they, they taught us a lot about how, how they were doing things. And, and, and that's how this originated, actually. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Is coffee calling? <laughs> okay. It well, was a late night for many people. It was, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe have some sugar yeah. and some caffeine. Yeah. No, but I want to give an applause to the people who have committed to do this. They are doing an amazing job on behalf of this community. So please give them a. Thank you so much, Astri. Thank you for having me.